Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with a fake Grand Order video. What are we doing today? I'm going to finally go over the Bunyan event, because <laughs> it should be, hopefully, coming up soon. So that's going to be today's video. Let's get right into it. So when does the event actually start? Well, we're going to have a live stream on the 18th, which is when Monster Water Crisis ends. So that would lead me to assume that Bunyan is on the 19th, which would be after maintenance. That's when it would come up. But they've been very weird about a lot of the everything. <laughs> a lot of the everything when it comes to learning with Manga Collab. So it's still not officially announced. And I still think they haven't put up the maintenance details either. But I assume that it's on the 19th. And if it's not on the 19th, I don't know how much more mid into April you can go for mid-April. But, you know, it'll get there. So let's take a look at the event itself now. And go right here. So what's this event? It's the Learning with Manga collaboration. That's right. It's the event that only I have been looking forward to for two years. <laughs> Everyone else absolutely hate this uh, event. Uh, except for some players on the JP side who hate the event but are like, Damn, I really liked a lot of the drop rewards from this event. Can you bring it back? <laughs> so let's go over it. It's going to be called Serial Genesis of Mississippi Mysticizers. I don't think it's called that anymore. I think they might have changed it to just something Mississippi Mythicizers or something like that. I, do, I don't remember the Serial Genesis days part of it. But anyway, uh, it should hopefully start on the 19th, like I said. The only requirement you need for it is to clear Fuyuki, and there shouldn't be any advanced stories that you need to know unless you are just deep into the learning with manga uh, lore as it is. In terms of the main events, there'll be a prologue. The main schedule goes kind of like this. This is kind of like a weird point system, but it's a point system that is enabled by a lotto of some kind, um, as you can see here. So you're going to have to get a certain amount of points, and the, every point will unlock the next um, part of the next qu uh, main act quest. And then also unlock free quests for you to grind for as well. And this will kind of be out here daily. There's no part two of the event. Uh, so after you get to the epilogue, it's basically done. And all you have to do is grind from then on in. Uh, the new servants that will be appearing for this will be Super Bunyan and Daikikoten and Mary Anning. Which are the three. There is no free-to-play servant. But basically Mary Anning is the free-to-play servant. It's very similar to Nobukatsu when they released Nobukatsu. Um, you'll get her in the free f uh, friend point banner. I keep wanting to call it the free to play banner. That is not what it's called. But the friend point banner, <laughs> you can get her from there. Uh, it should be hopefully relatively easy to get. This is what the event map will look like. And we'll get a My Room background dedicated to uh, looking like it's a movie being directed. So, uh, event mechanics. Here we go. Raise funds at the Mississippi River to become the owner of the treasure ship and the ship the, of the Seven Lucky Gods. Clear free quests to get excavation tools, Vercurius pickaxe, the thumping hammer, and the crumbly shovel. Using the evacuation tools, you get items in the bunny pay points, and you can excavate manually one tile at a time or use random excavation to automatically excavate, excavate multiple tiles at once. You obtain uh, the bunny points, the bunny pay points uh, for each tile you excavate, and then after ten excavations, you can reset the board. That does not mean the board is done. So just something to keep in mind. And as far as I'm aware, I think it's different every single time. I th yeah, because you can see here in the screenshots, these two look like the same, but then in the next one, it's something completely different looking. So I believe it is random every single time. Uh, I believe, anyway. If there's a set number of rotations, feel free to tell me so I would actually know myself for when I actually start the event. But as far as I'm aware of, it's random every single time. Reach a certain amount of bunny pay points to gain items, and then exchange items for the antique reel, the cigar stick fake, and the Raifuku rice ball. And then, of course, equipping the cranking increases the drop rate of this. Increasing uh, getting the adventures in the children kingdom gets the uh, drop rate for the antique reel. Jurassic Dreams gives you the cigar, and the Pleasure Hunt gives you the rice balls. Uh, as I said beforehand, you can get Mary Annie from the um, and two. Uh, you you can summon Mary Annie and two craft essences from the friend point summon pool. There you go. Mary Annie yields fifteen server coins per summon instead of the usual two. 
to make sure you can very quickly get everything related to it. Um, just like how I have like 600 Nobukatsu medals somehow. <laughs> a new quest is unlocked every day. You'll need a certain amount of the bunny advanced, as I mentioned beforehand. Max out the ownership gauge to decide who will become the owner of the treasure ship, and then after clearing a free quest, Super Bunyan will randomly give you items such as QP or friend points. Okay. Event bonuses. Who gets the bonus? Obviously, Daikikoten and Super Bunyan. They get 100% damage and 50% bond. Liz, Astolfo, Marie, Edison, and regular old Bunyan. 50% attack and 20% to bond. And all these other servants get the 30% uh, damage and 20% bond. And Mash, of course, gets the classic 50% attack and 5% uh, bond to all party members. The event C... Oh, she didn't load up. Mary Anning also gets the 100% damage bonus and the bond bonus. The event CE is for this. Cranking. Here it is. Um, Buster, MP damage, and starting MP is uh, 30%. So it will be a free-to-play version of a... 50% NP one if you can get the last copy to drop. I'm not sure if there's enough in the shop, but I can check that out real quick. The Destructive Star, the Cheerful Companions, and the Giant Blue Ox are the event command codes. Uh, Destructive Star is when attacking with the engraved card, increase MP damage by 10% one turn. Increase the engraved card's damage against Sky Aptitude to enemies by 10%. Cheerful Companions is when attacking with the engraved card, remove one of the latest critical buffs from the target, and then increase engraved card's critical damage by 10%. Giant Blue Ox, Engraved Card, Ignores Defense. So those are the three command codes for it. There's a summoning campaign, but I will look at that a little bit later as we look through the shop. Here you can see the pickaxe. Obviously, you're going to want to keep all your pickaxe, thumbing hammers, and crumbly shovels, so you probably should not. Uh, I think you can probably... I don't know what that means. Antique Reel. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. To get everything in the Antique Reel, you need 4,420 uh, uh, Antique Reels to get absolutely everything on offer here. Uh, you can get two of the C cranking CEs from here, uh, 10 Mary Anning Servant Coins, 10 Bunyan Servant Coins, uh, a Crystallized Lore, and I can assume that that's going to be shared for all of them. Correct. Everything except for the Crystallized Lore. So the Bunyan, the Crystallized, uh, the Mary Anning, and the cranking CE, one of, are going to go in the other ones. Um... Spirit Roots, uh, Dragon's Reverse Scale, and uh, the Antique Bell of Tranquility are the um, materials you can trade in for. In terms of statues, it's Lancer, it's Rider, it's Caster, and I assume this is Assassin, so that means you'll get gold for, for the film reels. Silvers will use the Cigar, and the Rice Ball will use the um, Bronze. Uh, gold Info, as always. Mm -hmm. And the quick code opener is for Antique Reel, and then, yeah. And then you can get a code opener for the cigar stick. This one gets the arts code opener. Along with, in terms of materials, you have the Demonic Flame of Hazuki, the Meteoric Horseshoe, and some Ash. Um, and the Rice Ball gets the Buster card opener. And the Divine Leyline Spiritron the Idrisil Seed and the Dragon Fang, along with all the other things, along with the e the classic EXP stuff, three, uh, 100 silver EXP, 100 four-star CE, and f uh, 50 of the five-star CE. Um, not CE. Um, EXP, EXP, <laughs> excuse me. And then finally, like I said, this is a point rewards. So you can see here in the point rewards itself, um, there'll be one, two, three summon tickets in total. And you only need 300,000, which is honestly not that much in the grand scheme of point ladders in Fago. I feel like that's not an insane task, but maybe I need to actually see the... <laughs> how it looks like in game when you're going through it 300,000 doesn't sound that much when i'm looking at it but maybe when i'm actually doing it that's a different story uh in terms of the other stuff in there it's you know obviously the craft essence exp stuff some mana prisms some qp some apples basic stuff the um a crystallized lore at 100,000 and the giant blue ox at um 15,000 stuff like that nothing too nothing too out of the ordinary here these are all the main quest stuff which i will not be looking at for here free quests there's a challenge quest that you need to have cleared the epilogue and solomon to actually do and from what i hear it's kind of annoying to do so keep that in mind 
the ex- excavation, which is the main thing that you're going to want to be doing in this event. <laughs> so, using excavation tools to get the items and the bunny pay points, you can excavate manually one tile at a time or use random excavation to automatically just excavate multiple tiles at once. You attain the bunny points for each tile excavated, and after 10 excavations, you can reset the board. Um, here are the items that are going to appear inside of it. Uh, this is going to be hard to describe them in, but you can kind of see here um, some of the stuff in here. I'll just say the cost. For specifically the pickaxe, the 10 cost node will give you either a chain of fate or 20 mana prisms. The 20 cost node will give you a hero's proof, a saber gem of either red or blue the other 20 which one of them has a sword in it and the other one has like a yellow line through it will give you the magic sir magical fluid and then a caster gem of either red or blue variety the 30 cost one which has like a little a rainbow shell in it actually has the aurora steel in it along with the permafrost ice crystal and the golden caster gem and the other uh, 30 cost, which has like a uh, silver gem in it instead of a rainbow one, can give you a Bloodstone Tears, a Crown of Radiant Silver, or a Secret Gem of Swords, which is the gold one. For the hammer, uh, the 10 node will either give you a Fang or 1 million QP. The other, the 20 node, the one that looks like it has a Dragon Fang in it, does not give you a Dragon Fang. It gives you the Stinger of Certain Defeat. Along with a either blue or red uh, rider gem. The other one that costs 20, looks like it just has a big old fat line in it, will either give you a night weeping iron stake or berserker gems of blue or red. The next one is best described as like two little brown donuts inside of it. <laughs> Uh, cost 30 and that will have either infinity gear or a seashell of remnants and then the golden berserker gem and the other one which has a dinosaur in it very easy to tell either has talent of chaos the snake jewel or a um gold uh rider gem and then finally the last one for the shovel the one that looks just plain is cost 10 you can get void refuse or lancer gems of the red and blue variety the one with a bone in it means you can get an unlucky bone and get an assassin gem of either a red or blue. The one that looks like it has like a little crumbly bits inside of it that has gunpowder in it and then archer of uh, archer gems of red or blue variety. And then the one that looks like it has little seashells in it that actually has arrowhead of uh, maledictions and or the golden archer gem or the golden lancer gem in it. And the other final 31 has what looks like a chicken bone somewhere inside of it. Or it's not chicken. It's not a drumstick. It is a vase. <laughs> it, it's a vase, not a drumstick. My bad. Uh, and it has a ghost lantern, a magatama, and a golden assassin gem. And then the rare items. These items will appear after four tiles surrounding it has been dug out. You can get a comet shard, a cursed beast, uh... Curse Beast uh, Chol- Cholcist, I think is how you say it, and then Spirit Root. And obviously the one, at least for me, the one I want to get most from this is the Comet Shard. And that is it. This is basically like a, not really a lotto, but kind of a lotto. It's kind of built more, did you ever play Pokemon Diamond and Pearl? Did you ever go to the Fossil Underground <laughs> and click around on stuff until you revealed things? It's kind of like that. Um, I guess the most uh, closest equivalent to here is that we had the um, the Nemo event underwater that gave us um, Van Gogh. I don't remember the name of it right now. It was like a sonar style event. It kind of has a map similar to that in terms of like clicking and... Thank you, Imaginary Scramble. Imaginary Scramble had this kind of like grid-like surface to it, and then you threw uh, your Osaka Behime into the water and kind of discovered stuff. It's kind of like that, except for now it's a little bit, I think, smaller, and then obviously you choose next, and then it's going to be one of these items that you find inside. And this can be done infinitely. You can do this as much times as you can stomach it <laughs> and keep going. And uh, as far as I can tell, a lot of the JP, I think some people on JP either ironically or unironically were asking for a rerun for this event specifically just for this lotto grind. <laughs> it is probably the only thing that they ever liked about this event because I have not heard a single good thing about this event other than that, which is a, a damn shame. But there you go. 
if you need any of the items that you can find here, uh, I would largely suggest trying to go for it. I don't know too much about it myself other than me looking into it to be like, all right, I need to look into and see what's up with this one thing that people seem to actually legitimately like about this event. Um, and there you go. I'll be grinding for it, that's for sure. I definitely need a lot of Comet Shards, so I'm going to see if I can get as many as I can. Uh, especially by the end, you should be just grinding it crazy on the final note and being able to pick up a lot of this stuff. But anyway, that's the excavation. Uh, and finally, finally, I can talk about the summoning campaign. But before then, I need to also talk about Marianne. Because <laughs> she's also a new unit, so I'll also talk about her. Um... I'll go over the limited craft essences because I doubt that there'll be anything. The Adventures in the Children Kingdom, it's an ignore invincibility CE with crit damage of 15% and MP gain 50%, which is actually not too bad, but for the most part isn't something you need to go out of your way for unless you're just a big fan of the Children's Kingdom from Learning with Manga, which I am, <laughs> so I would gladly get them fishing because this is also, I think, one of the very few rare CEs where Jack's wearing regular-ass clothes, so you know you have to support that wherever you see it. Uh, Jurassic Dream, Buster's up 3%, MP damage 5%, and MP overcharge one stage one time. Uh, that's it. It's a 4-star CE. And the Pleasure Hunt is the 3-star CE with Arts 2%, MP gain 3%, and star, uh, Star's up plus 1 a turn. And that will give you your Rice Balls. Nothing too crazy, but you know, they are, um, they do have some nice art for it. So, there you go. And you will at least always get Pleasure Hunt because you always get the 3 star CE whenever you start an event. So, let's start with Mary Anning. Mary Anning is a limited servant, only limited to the Friend Point summoning campaign, and specifically when they say she's going to be up. Um, if you do not have, you get her, basically get her MP5 now. Get her MP5 now and get her medals now while you have the chance. Uh, she does show up a little bit later on, but... It's going to be kind of annoying if you end up liking Mary Anning. And I do like Mary Anning, so this is your one-shot chance of going for it. So here's Mary Anning. There's the, her dog as well. Absolutely adorable. Absolutely nothing bad happens to this dog if I click on the further stages of Mary Anning. But Mary Anning is a Lancer. She's one quick, two arts, uh, two buster. Her active skills are Charisma of the Sea Lily Sea, increases the attack of female or unknown gender allies for three turns, increases the arts performance of female or unknown gender allies for three turns, increases the MP generation rate of female or unknown uh, gender allies by 10% for three turns, female or unknown gender attack up 15%, or female or unknown gender arts up 15% on the cooldown of five. Uh, second skill is the Fossil Lady's Great Discovery A. Gain crit stars, 500% chance to deal 500 damage to self without killing. 30 crit stars on a cooldown of 4. Damn, really? Oh, I mean, to be fair, um, Mozart has a bomb similar to this, so okay, fair enough. Um, Business Sense A. Reduces all enemies' MP gauge by 1. Charges party's MP gauge by 10% and then increases party's critical attack chance for 3 turns. The crit damage up is 30% on the cooldown of 6, and I believe if I did not mention this, is on a cooldown of 4? Wow. That's kind of crazy, but alright. I mean, to be fair, she is a, she's going to be very squishy, being that she is a Lancer of 2 star <laughs> variety. 2 or 1 star, I'm actually not 100% sure. It is 1 star, so yeah, she's going to be squishy as hell if you are not investing into her, so it makes sense. Uh, her servant coin for the third append skill is an anti alter ego attack damage aptitude, and her one skill is magic resistance E. That was I. It was so small I actively ignored it when I was going through it. And her noble phantasm is the rank B, the Durai Antiquiter, a, a more ancient door set, a four hit arts noble phantasm, deals damage to all enemies, inflict buff block for one time three turns to them. At MP level one, it's four hundred fifty percent damage. And if you get her to MP5, which should be pretty easy at 750%, and then an increased own arts performance for one turn is her overcharge effect. 10% arts, and 30% if you get it all the way to the final charge level, and that is Mary Anning. Before I actually start talking about this unit, I should mention that I am a big fan of learning with manga, so therefore I am not going to be the best judge of, uh, out of the idea of how much I like these units, how good are they actually, I'll try my best, <laughs> but for the most part, I will look for the good in the units that I like, <laughs> but I'm going to give you that bias up front, so at least you understand where I'm going from, and I really like Mary Anning, obviously, if you already have um, certain Lancers, there's a lot of actually good Lancer options for arts, um, 
One of the most obvious ones is Ryoma. Uh, Lancer Ryoma is a five-star one and most recently came out in the Guda Guda one. But even if you don't have him, there's a lot of good four-star options. I believe there's even maybe a three-star options as far as blue goes. Um, if at least not, maybe not on NA. Hold up, let me do a, a quick just look at, at how many AoE... Um, I always do this after the fact. I always <laughs> look it up after and see, like, was I right on this? Let me just do a quick old... Here we go. Oh, yeah, okay. I've talked about this duo before. So, obviously, the big ones are Ryoma, Percival, Lamba, and Fionn McCool. But there's also Vitra, and then there's also Eris that you can also use. And then, finally, there's Mary Anning. And I feel like Mary Anning seems like she would be a pretty solid option for someone who is maybe a little bit more free-to-play friendly because it is going to be easy to get her to NP5. If you are playing this event now, that is, um, you should be able to get her to NP5, uh, especially if you're grinding everything and trying to get her. I think it should be possible. Um, she is. She seems like she'd be perfectly fine. The female or unknown gender increase, I think, is really nice. It also it helps that it, this also increases the MP generation rate as well. Uh, she is female or unknown. That is correct. Uh, so I think you can make use of her. And again, as a free-to-play option while you're getting ready to set up for the game, I think that could make a lot of sense. And as someone who is going to be maybe building her up a little bit more to see, uh, similar to how I built up Bunyan, <laughs> I'm curious to see how she does a little bit later down at level 90. But I actually really like the way that they've designed Mary Anning here. She's able to be used for easy grinding, and then if you ever are in a situation where you're using her in like a ch silly challenge quest like me and my brother typically do, I could see us using her and be like, alright, let's see what female or unknown gender support can we use. Boom, Mary Anning, we're going to bring her right into the team. Uh, <laughs> she also is able to get 30 crit stars, which I think is actually pretty nice, and this ability to reduce all enemies' MP gauges is also really good. Uh, and it's little tiny support, so I think she's really solid, I think she's really good, and she's also free to get. Not that bad. The, the biggest thing holding her back is the fact that she is a one star. <laughs> but that also makes her... Jason's a one star. Jason's a one star. I'm just saying for the vast majority, you need to put more love and care into the one star units. Yeah. I think that's a fair assessment to say. Is that if you care yeah, about them... Also now. disregard them. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna. I'm not going to be disregarding Mary Annie. I think she's good. Yeah. And I'm glad to be able to get her and get her for free as well. But anyway... That's Mary Anning. Um, I also like the touch that they had. I don't know anything about the real life Mary Anning, but I do know in Learning with Manga she's a big fan of Saber, so I think it's funny that she is able to buff Saber with female or unknown gender allies being buffed. So that's a good touch there. Uh, Daiki Koten, everyone's favorite little rat guy from Dragalia Lost. She's been brought back in Fago. <laughs> Revived. Revived. Welcome back, Daiki Koten. Died 2020. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm just saying, welcome back, Dykecoded. Glad to have you back. Um, also known as the caster of learning in the Learning with Manga or the, the Learning with Manga caster. So strangely, everyone's chase unit. She is the chase unit. I think. I think that's fair to say. Even as someone who is a big Bunyan fan, everyone seems to be way more interested in Dykecoded. <laughs> Which you know, fair enough. Caster, two quick, two arts, one buster. Their active skills, because it's two mice on here, um, is the Metorious Service A. Increases his own quick performance for three turns, gains crit stars every turn for three turns, recovers party's HP every turn for three turns, 30% quick, 10 star regen, HP regen is 1,000, and the cooldown is 5. Their second skill is to benefit all sentient beings, charges on MP gauge, charges party's MP gauge every turn for three turns, uh, 30% to the MP and then MP regen for allies is 10% on a cooldown of 6. And then their third skill is the chil the Kingdom of Children B grants party evasion for 1 attack 3 turns, increases party's MP generation rate for 3 turns, on an MP rate is 30% on a cooldown of 6. Her passive skills are Territory Creation E, Item Construction D, and Divinity E-. minus. The Append skill is an anti-moon <laughs> cancer <laughs> damage out of the two. What's Daiki Koten got beefing with moon cancers for all of a sudden? Uh, Noble Phantasm is the Nizumi Jodo or the Paradise of the Mice. Anti-Army rank A 9-hit quick AoE, I believe. Yes. 
Uh, reduces all enemies' quick resistance by 20% for one turn. Deals damage to them, and then increases party's crit damage by 20% for three turns. Uh, damage is 600% at level 1, and at level, if you get them to MP5, it's 1,000. Deals extra damage to enemies with the Earth attribute. 150% at charge level 1, and if you get into the final charge level, it is 200%, and that is Daiki Koten. Daiki Koten is limited, but it's also an extra form of limited, which is that they are a collab servant. And they do not come back that often. I think in terms of... It's funny that Fago has only one 5-star. But within their limited 5-stars, there's tiers of 5-stars that are even more limited than a regular limited unit would be. Which would be... Um, the top of it is Draco. Uh, Draco's number 1. is the most limited 5-star servant in all in Fago. And then it comes, I think, collab units that are somehow 4-stars <laughs> and 5-stars are typically on that list. Though I think the four stars are actually more rare than the... Huh. I think they actually might be more rare than the their equivalents of it. But anyway. Um, and then finally, you have the regular five stars, who are limited. Um, and then I think actually slightly above them are the story locked, which is another form of limit. I've gone on this for long enough. Daiki Koten seems really cool. I think she is literally the only AoE caster for quick in the entire game on NA. Uh, just let me do a quick check to that to see if that is true. That is 100% true. There are no other quick casters in the NA version of the game. I think by this point, I think JP should have had them, but this is literally the, if you're interested in doing any form of quick farming uh, with a with, with a caster unit, Deca Coded is your only option. <laughs> so this is your only chance to get them. Um, I think their, their skill set is actually pretty fun. I do like that they seem pretty well built out. Being able to deal extra damage to Earth attributes mean that sometimes they might be able to make up with for the deficiency of quick, which is that they do less damage overall. I mean, they also reduce the enemy's quick resistance first by 20%, so that will be a big help for it as well. Um, but dealing damage to Earth attributes means that if you're fighting a bunch of Earth attributed enemies, then you can kind of easily rely on them to do the damage if the base 600 percent with a 20 percent quick resistance does not get them the 150 percent extra damage that you are going to be doing will get them but even if you use them in a, in a scenario where you're maybe doing a little bit more um either a challenge quest or a ch kind of a challenging fight something that will last longer than a single turn of farming i think they can still work out they have a party recover hp they have the ability to grain crit star crit stars every turn they have the ability to charge their own MP gauge, which is actually pretty key when it comes to quick units, because a lot of them need it. Um, but then it also charges the party's MP gauge as well for every turn for three turns. So over time, they'll get 30%, 30 which isn't bad. And the third skill also gives party-wide generation MP generation rate. So honestly, that's what you also want out of... Uh, that's uh, kind of crazy. I can kind of see why some people are just want to go for them, because usually for a quick unit to kind of succeed at farming... They need the ability to charge their own MP gauge or increase MP generation rate because typically, or a way to increase their damage to kind of the ultimate maximum form. Um, and it seems like they kind of have all three of those abilities. Some quick uh, farming um, units only have like two out of the three, but I think they actually might have three for three on this one, even though the third one is kind of like a caveat because you need to go for the earth attributed. Uh, enemies on this one that's cool i think it's kind of funny that the game has gone on this long and this is the first time they ever introduce a quick aoe caster unit that's kind of silly <laughs> on a lot of faces it's it's like how have we gone on this long and you've just never released one of these that's kind of funny. So there you go. There's Daiki Koden. I really hope I get them when I'm going for Super Bunyan. I'm also hoping that I can get a little bit more MP copies as well to help make up for the fact that um, uh, casters just naturally do less damage. Um, wait, I, yeah, okay, yes. Yes, just naturally. Yes, they do naturally. Do. For a brief moment, that I was like, "Isn't Nursery Ryan a quick?" No, she's AOE. She's a uh, AOE um, arts. Sorry. So that's Daikikoten. Welcome back. Hopefully I'm able to get you. It's funny that both Daikikotens ended up being crazy limited, because the Daikikoten in Dragalia loss was also um, limited to a New Year's banner. <clears throat> Super Bunyan. Also known as Super Banyan. <laughs> Apparently. 
<laughs> on the Japanese server, some of them are called her Super Banyan. Uh, Super Banyan. She is a alter ego. She has a quick, one quick, one arts, three buster. So she's got the gorilla kit kind of going for her. Executive Order C is her first skill, which is an increase to own attack for three turns. They increase the party's buster performance for three turns. The attack up is 30% and the buster up is 20% on cooldown of six. Second skill is Division Quest A, charges on MP gauge and then overcharges party's MP by one stage for one turn. 30% uh, MP to herself on a cooldown of six. Her third skill is Let's Spread the Maple Syrup. A. Seal all enemies' NP for a single turn. Reduces their critical attack chance for three turns. Increases the party's critical uh, uh, critical absorption star of Buster cards for three turns. 30% um, to crit chance down and Buster absorption is 500% on the cooldown of six. The passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Item Construction C, and the Power of Like EX, which I'm going to have to explain a little bit more. Grants self a buff on attack buff. Grants a self like buff for three turns when attacking. A like enables extra damage from Super Bunyan's NP. Grants self a buff on defense buff. Grants self a like buff for three turns when taking attacks. The third skill is an anti berserker damage aptitudes, because trust no one, not even yourself. And the Noble Phantasm is America's sweetheart of darkness. <laughs> the star spangled symbol that clears away the darkness. Uh, this is an amazing noble phantasm. I never knew that's what they called it. Rank A anti army hits three times. It's a buster. Deals damage to one enemy. Deals 100% plus 5% extra damage. Enemies own equal likes. Max count 10. 600% at level 1. And then MP damage at level 5 is 1000. Reduce their defense for three turns is the overcharge effect, with it being 10% at level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final, overcharge level is 30%. And a bonus thing to mention, this is also where um, uh, Rio Assassin and Rio Rider are also located, because you're going to need them in the later stages of uh, Bunyan, of Super Bunyan, if you actually want to use them. As was told in the lore of uh, Learning with Manga, where Sh Bunny Rider literally says, if we just pop off on Bunyan, we can just get into the game that way. That was their plan all along of getting implemented. <laughs> Turns out that Ryo was working ahead of time all the time. Um, hold up one moment, because I'm getting my phone is work is in. I'm going to pause real quick to confirm it. Okay, to wrap it up. Uh, Bunyan. How good is she actually? I don't know. I don't think Super Bunyan is going to be that crazy of a unit. The reason is, is that a lot of this just doesn't feel enough for what she's kind of doing and also making up for the fact that she is an alter ego. So alter egos have a rougher time of a lot of things. You think that because they have a three party wide, uh, three party wide, three class wide advantage over some of them, they'd be easier to use. But the answer is a lot of the time the answer is that's not the case. Um, they end up being, a, it's very specific times where you're going to be able to use them and stuff like that. So they end up needing a little bit more if they're going to actually do something. Um, and I feel like she just doesn't have enough as I can see right here. Like, it's actually kind of weird that she increases the party's critical absorption of buster cards for three turns. Because it is a nice buff to the party, but at the same time, she is a buster unit herself, whose entire thing is being a buster gorilla. You can't use that skill, and it actively kind of, like, hurts her in some kind of way. At least that's what I'm getting from this. Um, reducing of critical attack chance is nice, but yeah, to be honest, there's nothing here that, like, jumps out at me. Basically, the thing that jumps out about me about this unit is that it features Bunyan and Rio Rider and Rio Assassin. <laughs> that is the reason why I am going for Super Bunyan. I feel like they could have done a little bit better for her main skills, because I think they really knocked it out of the park with the Noble Phantasm, because this also relates to President Bunyan and the way that in Learning with Manga, she gained likes from the reason that Bunyan got so powerful and got her big old head... Uh, <laughs> Got a big old head about an ego trip about it was that she was getting constant likes on social media and then eventually she got like um, shamed off of Twitter and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of like that they were incorporating that into it, but you know, I just feel like the other skills just, you know, aren't doing it. It feels like too basic for a collab unit, in my opinion. Which is a real shame because I don't like saying that about units that I would potentially like. But I don't know. I feel like there's something missing. Something that could just be improved on a little bit more. But, uh, 
that, that that's how I'm saying. It doesn't change the fact that I am still going to be summoning for Super Bunyan. <laughs> Because as I said before, I love Bunyan. I have a level 100 Bunyan. I'm a big fan of learning with manga. I just wish that maybe somewhere down the road they kind of buffer at some point. Because they could definitely use it. Especially for like a single target unit. I just don't know if this is going to be enough to kind of get things done. Um, but yeah, if you know a little bit more, feel free to tell me. But like I said at the beginning, a lot of people hate this event. So I'm not going to be surprised if there's going to be anyone here going to be positive about my girl Super Bunyan. But... <laughs> Doesn't change the fact that I'll still be summoning for Super Bunyan. And hope to, hope hoping to God that I get her. So, yeah, that's the ba that's the entire event, the Learning with Manga collab. Um, in terms of banner summons, I think Daikakoden is actually the one that I would say is like, if you're someone who is specifically looking for a quick caster unit, this is literally the only one that's going to be in the game for a while on NA. Uh, not that any that I can think of at the top of my head are going to be coming soon to the game. Um, it's pretty, it's a pretty rare thing, just not in general do a lot of people need a quick caster of any kind. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the event. I've heard nothing but bad things, but then I heard nothing about good things about the water monsters, and I thought that event was just kind of okay. And to be fair, JP also is weird when it comes to what events they like. Like, they don't like the Halloween summer event, and I really like the Halloween summer event. They hated that event. They were like, this sucks. Get get off of here. And I played it. I was like, this is sick. This is literally just a horror movie set within with Fago characters, <laughs> and I really liked it. So, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot, though everything I've heard about it sounds bad. But at the same time, some people can just be super crazy over dramatic. So it's better to experience it yourself. Maybe I'll be happily surprised. Or maybe I'll be like the last collab story where I was actively like, there's no way that this character is this popular and this badly written. So I'll see. Uh, that, 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 that event really last year, I can't imagine it being worse than that. That made me actively dislike uh, Eris. To the point where I was like, I need to read her where she comes from because I refuse to believe. She's, uh, she's in summer this year. She is in summer this year and she's with Summer Buki and I'm not a big fan of it. I was like actively like poo-pooing it. And the reason is is that I don't like her because that's my only exposure to her. And I feel like I need to actually read where the stories where she comes from because I refuse to believe that she is that bad of a character. And from what I've heard from others, the event that she came with really did her a disservice. So... You know, <laughs> it's better to just kind of like, I don't know, I, basically, I don't know. I need to get to work, everyone. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you watched to the end of it, you can leave a like to support the channel. Um, I'll be up ahead with whenever they decide. Hopefully Super Bunyan is on the 19th, so I can record a video right before my birthday. And hopefully get her for my birthday as an early birthday gift. And otherwise, if it's not, if that's not the case, I hope she releases close enough to my birthday that it's not a pain in the ass to try and summon for her. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, I wish you guys the best of luck. Peace out. Bye.